You've got Greenland, right? Sounds lush, verdant, maybe even tropical. Except it's not. Greenland is overwhelmingly covered in a colossal sheet of ice. We're talking 80% ice, give or take. Then you have Iceland. Sounds cold, frozen, maybe a land of perpetual winter. But Iceland is surprisingly green. It has rolling hills, dramatic valleys, and a climate that's far milder than its name suggests. So, what's the deal? Why is the Greenland full of ice and the Iceland relatively green? Is it some ancient cartographer's prank? A cosmic joke played on anyone trying to remember basic geography? The answer, my friends, is a fantastic blend of history, marketing, and ocean currents. It's a story that takes us back over a thousand years to the age of the Vikings. Yes, the Vikings. Those seafaring, exploring, occasionally pillaging folks who really got around back in the day. They were the first Europeans to stumble upon both of these North Atlantic islands. Iceland was actually discovered first by Norse explorers. There's a tale of a guy named Nadod who got blown off course and landed there, calling it Snailand or Snowland. Not exactly inviting. Later, settlers arrived, most famously Ingolver Arnason, who was traditionally considered the first permanent Norse settler of Iceland. They found a land that, while sometimes icy, especially in the fjords, was certainly habitable. Now, enter Eric the Red. A bit of a character, Eric. He was a Norse explorer, known for having a bit of a temper and a knack for getting into trouble. Specifically, Eric the Red was exiled from Iceland. Twice, actually. The second time, around the year 982 CE, he decided he'd had enough of Iceland's legal system and sailed west, seeking new lands. And sail west he did. He eventually found a massive island, far larger than Iceland. This was the land we now call Greenland. Eric spent about three years exploring this new territory during his exile. He found fjords that were habitable, at least during the warmer months, and some coastal areas that were indeed green. But here's where the marketing genius, or perhaps mischief, comes in. When Eric the Red returned to Iceland after his exile was up, he wanted to attract settlers to this new land he'd found. He needed to make it sound appealing. He needed a hook, something that would make people pack up their lives and sail into the unknown, across treacherous seas. So, he named it, Greenland. Groenland in Old Norse. This wasn't necessarily a perfectly accurate description of the entire island, which, as we know, is mostly ice. But it was a brilliant piece of early advertising. Eric the Red himself reportedly said that people would be more tempted to go there if it had a good name. He understood the power of branding, even back in the 10th century. Imagine the pitch, forget icy Iceland. Come to Greenland. 